Today, we are going to look at a body viz brain builder about a living liver transplant. A living liver transplant is when a living person donates a part of their liver to someone in need. Typically, liver transplants are done with cadaveric donors, which is what makes a living liver transplant different from a normal liver transplant. Let's start with an understanding of what the liver does for the body. The liver is the largest gland in the body, weighing approximately 2.5% of a person's total body weight. One of the functions of the liver is that it filters blood through the thousands of hepatic lobules that comprise the liver. Similar to a coffee filter, blood enters the liver through the hepatic artery proper and the hepatic portal vein. The blood then filters through the hepatic lobules, taking out toxins from the blood, and then draining into the central hepatic vein of the respective liver lobe, and eventually into the inferior vena cava. The liver occupies three regions from the right hypochondriac, epigastric, and left hypochondriac abdominal regions, which are highlighted here. The liver is located right below the diaphragm and composed of four lobes, with two main lobes and two accessory lobes. The main two lobes are the right and left lobes, which are separated by the falciform ligament. The accessory lobes are the quadrate and caudate lobes. The quadrate lobe is seen to the left of the gallbladder on the inferior or lower side of the liver. The caudate lobe, which is on the posterior or back side of the liver, is surrounding the inferior vena cava. The liver is a unique organ and that is the only organ capable of regeneration. Due to its regenerative abilities, a reduced size portion of an adult liver can be transplanted into a pediatric patient. Currently, living relatives can donate part of their liver for transplantation. Next, we will look at symptoms, causes, and treatments for liver failure. And finally, give a patient example. Symptoms that a liver is failing include jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin and eyes, pain in the upper right abdomen, abdominal swelling, nausea and vomiting, disorientation or confusion, sleepiness, a sweet or musty smell of the breath, and finally, tremors. There are many causes of liver failure, and here are a few. Acetaminophen overdose. This is the most common cause of liver failure in the U.S., which results from taking too much Tylenol. Prescription medications and herbal supplements, the hepatitis virus, different toxins, autoimmune and metabolic diseases, cancer, shock from an overwhelming infection can impair the blood flow to the liver, a heat stroke, and lastly, genetic and hereditary liver diseases. Treatments for liver failure are limited and depend on if the liver can recover or not. Medications can be used to reverse poisoning from overdose to reduce liver damage. But oftentimes, liver failure cannot be reversed, in which case a liver transplant may be the only option. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 10. Gender, male. Chief complaints, decreased energy and appetite with a general unwell feeling. You invite the patient into your office for an examination. You immediately notice his yellowish complexion compared to his parents and see yellowing in the sclera of his eyes. You ask how long the patient has been feeling unwell, and he reports that today is day four of feeling unwell. You ask about any medications, supplements, or acetaminophen the patient has taken and their parents report none. You send for a blood and urine samples, as well as an ultrasound of his liver. The results show failing of the liver, and you diagnose the patient with Wilson disease, which is a rare genetic disorder that can cause liver disease. The patient is put on a wait list for a liver transplant when his aunt agrees to donate part of her liver as a living liver transplant. This is a classic example of a liver failure and a living liver transplantation.